found the absolute best way to raise ducklings. Usually they're very messy. What we did this year was a game changer. So this video is gonna cover from day one when we first got them all the way till month three. They're out in their big girl coop. We've had snow. They're completely adjusted to weather, fully feathered and gorgeous. So if you're considering raising ducklings or if you have and it's just been a mess and you thought I'm never gonna raise these animals again, you gotta watch this. They're so cute. I set up their brooder at the school so the kids could be around them, handle them, help them to become used to people. Tubs like these work really well. This, it's deep enough they can't jump out and you could put the heat lamp over it or even a tote if you have just a couple birds. I have 10 so I wanted a large area. Picked up this kiddie pool. They need to have a non-skid surface so I picked up this shelf liner at Walmart. It's just under 15 bucks a roll. 20 by 18. Okay, so far what I've done is I went ahead and moved the food out of the food tray and put water in it so that it's less of a mess. I put their food in this little container. Underneath here, these pads were a little bit wet, but I know so if I just lay another one on top, it's good to go for tonight. You'll notice this barricade so they can't get into the whole pool yet. I just made it so they can't get into a corner and they can't get out away because I want to make sure that they're in this small area near the light. I do have a heat lamp, which some people are opposed to. Um, it does have the protective covering and I will move the cardboard box and get something a little less flammable. I have a plastic box I'm gonna replace with it. But for now, that's what I have. I haven't ran up and got the plastic box. It can be tricky to keep ducks from having everything really wet because they're ducks and they have to put their beaks into the water so that the water can go through their nostrils and it helps them to get their food down. They seem very content, so I can tell that the temperature is good. They've got the food and water that they need. I don't like to put the bedding down yet because at this age, they don't really know the difference between food and junk or bedding and they don't have their mom here to show them. This is a dog pad, it's waterproof. That's kind of why I like it. I had the water on top of it at first. Um, but I forgot the other dog pads at my house, and so I didn't want to run all the way home and get them. Anyway, so this is my final um, setup besides swapping that out for something less flammable. Um, I have this secured up on the table. It seems pretty sturdy. Unless we have an earthquake, well, I think we're good to go. I had this thermometer in there, but they just wanted to peck at the little red knob, so I took it out. It's pretty easy to tell if they are too cold or too warm. If they're too cold, they'll be all hunched up together, like crowding each other right under the light. If they're too hot, they go as far away from the light as they can get. And if they're just right, they're just mingling around amongst themselves doing their thing. So I can tell by looking at them, they're good. The first day you get them, you want to have a space that's 95 degrees so that they can get under it. So a thermometer is handy. Okay, it's the morning of day two, and the water in the feeder worked really well. It's really dry in here. They're all well. The room temperature in here was 64, and with the light, it was fine. If you're getting ducklings, this has worked better than when we've used this sort of a setup in the past, or the larger waterers, when we've had more little critters. At this age, this is working well. I know when they get bigger, at least when there's food in the feeder, they can turn it over and stuff. And so they might be able to tip the water out. I might have to rethink that very shortly here. But for now, this is a really good way to have tidy ducklings, if that's even a thing. I have the ducklings in at the school. And I was so worried about them since they're not up where I can just get up in the night and peek at them. I got up at 3.30 so I could come in here and check them. And they're doing well. Okay, so I just cleaned it. It's about 5.45 in the morning. Um, I just put them back in. And we'll see what it looks like. Probably be a lot of poo, but I'm hoping that it stays pretty dry. See how this watering situation works. This is day three. And what I'm noticing today is somehow... They got it really wet over there. So we have to figure that out. This, this shelf lining is wonderful. This feels dry to the touch. If you look down below, you can see underneath there is water. So it does help keep the top layer dry. Really important for the ducklings to stay dry so they don't get chill can kill them. This washes off also super, super easy. 
in the sink or with a hose or in your bathtub. What I usually do is I try to take a rag and wipe off all the big chunks. And then I just take it to the bathtub and just really scrub it really well. And then rinse out the tub really well. And it works really, really nicely. It is really storming outside. One of my concerns is that we might lose power. And since these guys are at school and out of my house, it's not like I can just jump up and go check or that I'll know there's no power. So what I decided to give a try are foot warmers. So my thought is place these foot warmers in these little pouches that I found in the cupboard so that they're not directly on them. I don't want them to get too hot and burn them. Says that they'll be warm up to nine hours. We'll just keep an eye on our local power company's map early morning to make sure there's no outages. I am going to go ahead and pull these out and activate them just in case something happens in the night because it won't take long at all and these guys would die from lack of heat. So I'm just hoping this is enough. If that does happen, that they'll be okay. I chose the foot insoles because they're longer and you just, they're air activated. I can already feel the warmth coming to them. I'll put one in there. Yeah, this one's already getting warm too, so just stick them in here, just like that. And then they normally like to lay in this area. I'm gonna put it just a little bit on the edge because I don't want it too warm. If this is the perfect temperature, I'm just gonna put it kind of on the outside edges and see so that they can opt to go there if they want to, but it's not gonna overheat them. Okay, I actually moved them over here a little bit. Then they could all kind of huddle here and their own body warmth will help. Yeah, it's nice, toasty. Their body warmth will also help keep them warm. I'm gonna cover them up so they don't have direct contact with the bag. Okay, let's put these guys back in. They're so cute. I just put them back in and look, just running over the water got a lot of water. I'm guessing it must have tipped a little bit. Maybe I'm feeling it too high. Hmm, that must be it maybe. I'm not sure. I did go ahead and put some of this matting down below because the paper towels absorb it and just so soak it in everywhere. I put the I put this shelf liner underneath the this and hopes to try to keep it as dry as possible and not have that entire area wet. This is where they sleep, so this is the most important part to be dry. So we'll see how it goes by morning. This is the fourth day we've had them. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the entire area of the pool now that they kind of know where the heat source is and they're not lying directly under it. They're kind of coming over here. So I think they'll be okay coming back and finding what they need to find. I had to take them home last night due to the weather. They're back in this box, but I'm not quite ready to take them out yet, but just have a peek at how adorable they are. And now they grown up. They are growing up, huh? Yeah. They have grown since we've gotten them, definitely. We have put down a tarp. Just wiped out the pool. Nice thing about pools is that they're so easy to clean. Look how beautiful that is. I have the shelf liner down. And I'm gonna cover that with paper towels because midday clean, it's easiest to pull these out and replace them instead of cleaning the entire Pool. I'm trying a waterproof pet pad, usually used for like dog training, underneath the water to see if that will help keep the rest of the bedding clean. We've had them for four days and you can see the difference in how big they are already. They grow up so fast. Day five, it's in the morning and I swapped out the puppy pad today for a tray, like a jelly roll pan, the real large ones. If I had a smaller water, I could use just a standard cookie sheet. We'll see how that goes. I did like the puppy pads, I just happened to forget them, so we're going to try this today. So it's about three o'clock. I changed this buddy in this morning about six o'clock. Not too bad. Having the pan with the water and feet on it, most of the mess is in there. That's actually not too bad. And this is pretty dry, so cleanup will be a lot easier than when it's sopping wet. Normally, if you don't have the right setup, ducks get the entire bottom of this thing full of water or water throughout. And you have to like clean it all out. Right now with this, I just 
throw the paper towels away and then shake out the the brown shelf lining and wipe it down and then wipe down the pool parts that are exposed and we're good to go. It does take a bit of time, but way less time than when it's a big watery mess. Oh man, one, one jumped out of the box and I was putting away. All right, so we've had them for eight days now and have officially outgrown their box. They were popping their heads out of there this morning when I was trying to bring them back. I've been bringing them back and forth from school to home because it's been very stormy and power outs, I don't want to chance it with just a light on them because this building would get quite cold, way too cold for them if we lost power. And thankfully I took them home yesterday because um, the school did lose power. I could tell because every, all of the electronics were off. So anyways, they're getting big. At home they lived in a little plastic tote right next to our wood stove. You can see why these regular duct waters are not ideal. They get their whole little bodies in there. I just changed the bedding and put this down. And you can see down here if they move, see it's getting all wet so, so fast. All right, I think I'm gonna time how long it takes me to change their bedding sure they have clean bedding in the morning and then we go home and they have clean bedding at home we come back and they have clean bedding again in the morning so they're getting switched out of their environment a couple times sometimes midday we'll take the dirtiest ones off of this area and switch them out especially now that they're getting older they're getting um eating a lot more and so it is more messy and so that tray sometimes needs to get changed out just because it gets pretty poopy they tend to hang out right there and poop a lot as they drink and eat so the outsides do do get messy too but not nearly the same if you've never had ducks or chickens or anything it would give you an idea of the time commitment that you're gonna need to have for these little guys that all really depends on how you set up their brooder there might be situations that are way easier than this so the time needed to clean up the ducks twice a day varied a lot from when they were really tiny until they got larger. The bigger they got, the longer it took because they made a bigger mess. But I think the longest it took me was 30 minutes and that was to take everything out, clean it, and wipe down the pool, which was super easy to do. So not too bad. So today they're nine days old. Look how much bigger they are. Crazy, huh? Okay, they are 10 days old. Happily eating and drinking. I'm noticing the light. I will try to grab a clip later, but they are definitely moving away from the light. So the average temperature in here is between 64 and 68. Right now it's 64. So I'll try to get a clip of them when it's 64 degrees and where they're laying in relationship to the heat lamp. Okay, we've had them 11 days. Looking good, guys, looking good. It won't be long at all and I'll have to get um, a wire to surround this, like a little short fence to surround this so that they can't pop over the edge because they'll be popping over shortly. I've just been kind of waiting to see, I'm curious to see how old they actually will be before they can jump this ledge. So I haven't put it up yet because that per would prevent me from actually knowing. But on the other hand, I don't want one popping out when I'm not around and not being able to get back in and making a big poopy mess and crying and whining for its little friends and getting too cold potentially. I'll try to sneak up on them so you can see how they are completely in a separate area from the light. Whereas just a week ago, they were laying right under the light. So they grow so fast. And it's really nice to have a large area for them to decide what temperature they do want to be resting at. It's time for me to put one more water in there because they're getting big enough now that this will not last them until nighttime. So I just filled that maybe a half hour ago and it's almost noon, like 11.45 or something. Anyways, if I get one more, it should last until late afternoon and I'll come back and take care of them again which will then have to wait until morning. And I'm curious to see if the, just the two waters will be enough to, to hold them over till morning. Because one is certainly not. It's completely dry in the morning if I don't fill it up in the night. 
and I really don't want to be filling them up in the night. I want to sleep at night, so I'm off to get the second water and bring it back in here. Okay, it's been six hours, and they still have water. They are 12 days old today. They want mealworms from me. Hello, babies. All right, they're 13 days old today, and just, it's such a mess. It smells horrible. They have gone overnight. It's about noon. I had meetings this morning, so I didn't have time to change them out, but we're gonna add some bedding today. That will, should help make it a little less nasty in here. All right, that is one bag of the pellets. It's the pelleted bedding, so it's just pressed wood. There's no glues or anything in it. And you can see where it gets wet. It just breaks down into like sawdust. I accidentally spilt part of my pitcher of water. I kind of tripped, and so you can see I've already gotten some of the bedding wet. Unfortunately, that was not my plan, but at least I can show you what happens to it. It just turns into this sawdusty stuff. It doesn't really feel real wet to the touch. And then I can scoop this out and add it to compost and it'll all break down and it'll be good in the garden. I could also have used shavings, but I went with the pelleted bedding this time. I have children in here helping and I thought that might just be easier than than the shavings and the shavings are pretty dusty compared to the pine bedding so we'll see um i'll see if i like it indoors better or not usually we have the birds in the garage <laughs> i think another bonus of the pelleted bedding is the poop on the bedding is so unsightly and i think it'll blend in better on this and it won't just look so bad so we'll see i'm, I'm gonna see what i think i know in the shavings it's you, I just kind of scoop it out, but we'll see. They are 14 days old and I had to make them a playpen because they're getting so big, I think they could jump out now. I'm about ready to go, so I fill, filled their water, filled their feed. I need to get one more feed out here. <laughs> but it's crazy how big they are in two weeks. That is a puppy pad. I need to pull it out and get a new one. I like to lay on the puppy pads opposed to just the pellets. They will always go to the puppy pad no matter where I put it. So they definitely enjoy, enjoy that. Pellets probably feel lumpy bumpy on their little feet is my guess. They feel lumpy bumpy on my feet. I need to take the time to go to the farm supply store and grab some wire of some sort to put around there, but I don't want to take the time tonight because I didn't get my work done yet. And I get home at a decent hour. So that's the playpen for today. And then tomorrow, maybe I'll have time to go get some wire, but I think it should be fine for just overnight. They haven't yet jumped out, but I'm sure they can. Okay, they are 16 days old. And they are just drinking and eating and being merry. Their pen is getting too small. They can't run and play and be out in the grass, but it is a little cold outside. It is January. So until I could get something out with a heat source, they need to stay inside. But they're getting big. If you've ever raised ducks before, you will know how incredible the lack of water everywhere is. It's all contained on this pan. Is the pan messy? Yes, but the bedding. Generally, I would be cleaning bedding out, you know, a couple times a day. I have not cleaned, I have not changed this bedding out since I put it in. So that's a huge, huge bonus. Okay, they are 17 days old. See yeah, how they're kind of all spread out, not huddled under the light, not clear across. That's an indication that the temperature is pretty good for them. I had moved the pool a little bit farther away from the light to try to give them some more space to be away from it because I thought it might be getting too warm in here. Our temperatures next week should be in the 50s for the highs which is too cold but if I could come up with an outdoor heating area for them to go back under then they could just come and go as they wanted so I'm kind of trying to figure out that I'm at the school, they're eventually gonna to go to my house, but I would really like for them to 
be able to enjoy them a little longer and actually see them get to the full feathered age. All right, they're 18 days old, and I have to say, I am liking this pine bedding so far. It does not smell. Ducks smell typically pretty bad, but as long as I keep the feed and water tray cleaned, the smell is totally fine. So just look how big they're getting. Hello, friends. They're nibbling my fingers. And they were racing around, running through the water, so they're a little dirty right now. They love the mealworms. It's like such a treat. Okay, one of the little stinkers got out. This is exactly why I have cardboard around. I have to catch it. Come here. Might be easy, I'll, I'll get a meal one. Okay. okay. Stay in there, buddy. Here you go. Okay, lesson learned. Do not leave that open. Okay, that did not work. Little fella. I've had these guys for 20 days. And today I went ahead and switched out the pelleted bedding because yesterday it was so stinky, it was unbearable. So I switched out. That bedding lasted a week, and I'm going to go with um, the shavings and see how well I like it compared. It's been a while since I've raised ducklings, a few years, and so I just want to compare the two right like next to each other. These little ladies are about ready to go into an outdoor coop with a light but i'm gonna let them hang out the rest of the week here at the school and we'll see how i just want to see how this bedding goes compared to the pelleted i really did like the pelleted bedding till yesterday <laughs> i could have went ahead and got a fresh bag of pelleted bedding i did notice it bothered my eyes i thought i had pink eye actually they got so irritated they eve they actually crested up and then every time after i figured out it was the bedding i w would like run in the bathroom and like rinse my eyes really quickly because i could feel them start to get irritated so it might just be a sensitivity i have i've never noticed that with the shavings before okay 22 days old the shavings are messier than the pellets in that they get them all up and i guess they got both of them in the tray but they get them more into the waters than the pellets so that is a negative with the shavings. They are starting to just barely get the little edges of feathers coming out on their little fluffy bodies. These guys are 23 days old and I'm hoping to get them into their coop today or Sunday. So I just made a new waterer for them to try out. It's this half, no, that's a gallon jug with a hole in it for them to put their heads in. Hopefully they don't just tip it over and make a mess. Let's see, I'm gonna hang out for a bit and see how it goes. All right, these guys are 25 days old. You can see they're starting to get their feathers in. See? We're getting a coop ready for them. It's not quite, I'm not feeling great, so I, I didn't get their coop ready quite yet, but I'm hoping in the next day or two. But I changed out their water. These are just water jugs. Let me show you. Hello guys, with a spot taken out so they can get their heads in there, but it holds a lot more water than the little chick feeders there. So I've gone ahead and given them the new waters because these were not big enough. They were um, going through the water too fast and went ahead and put their food in the chick feeders. These are for food, but moving out the big cookie sheet gives them a little bit more room since they are too big for this area as it is. This is the last thing I need in my life today. Good grief, I just came out and three are out again. This is not okay. Let's sneak in and see how cute these guys are. If they hear me, they'll be disturbed, but. So tomorrow they'll be about four weeks, I believe. Oh, they hear me. Anyways, I've opened these two doors because a lot of cool air comes in. I have it protected from drafts with this, this cardboard and such, but they're gonna be going outside soon, like today. And it's a huge temperature difference from inside. So just trying to, I've been trying to do that a little, do that a little bit and 
get them ready. I've actually turned the heat off in this room and it's still 61. I think from just their little bodies and that heat lamp, normally it would be in the 50s. Kind of incredible what a few duck bodies and a heat lamp can do to the temperature of a room. Okay, they're in their bigger girl coop. All cozy, cozy, cozy in there. Just got them in. Ducklings are four weeks old today. I don't know if you can see in the path, but it is a little frosty out. So I want to check on them before I go to work. I've been worried about them all night. To go from brooding indoors to outdoors seems like could be a bit of a shock with the heat. They do have a heat light. You can see the red light. I use the red bulb so it doesn't interfere with their sleep. Or at least that's what they say. I don't hear anything, yikes. Where are they? They're all good. They're down there. I thought they'd be right there under the light. I just scared them so bad. I'm sorry, guys. All right, we've had them five weeks now. They're getting pretty big. Look at all those feathers. She's calling for her friends because her friends are all inside. I'm pretty sure. I cannot believe we have snow. Like real, actual snow that's stuck on the ground. Oh, I frightened them, but here's the ladies. They're about eight weeks old. It snowed here, which is extremely unusual. But as you can see, they're pretty hard enough to be outside on their own now. Here they are, about three months old. Look how big they are. Odd, but ever since I brought them home, they're frightened of me. So they always act crazy and go into the corner whenever I come out to them. 